What's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. It is Monday. It is Monday, post Super Bowl Sunday, Monday. And many of you are, are recovering from um, a Super Bowl Sunday bash, probably eating and drinking more than you would have liked. Um, and I want to uh, speak to that today. Uh, I have been accused, guys. I've been accused by many of, of never having fun. And I will preface this by saying that I have, I'm, I'm 52 this year, and I have gone to maybe 10 Super Bowl parties, maybe in my whole life. And for many reasons. Uh, oftentimes my team's not in it. Uh, but even when my team was in it, um, I don't remember going to or having a party. Uh, most times I, I was, was many times I was playing football still in my life. So I, I spent that morning training, uh, oftentimes working out and, uh, otherwise just, just spent the day enjoying, you know, the festivities in my own personal space. Um, not to mention, I like to watch the game, like to watch the game. I don't like to be around the other activities involved. That's just my personal preference. But it relates to this in that I have been accused, not just on Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sundays, but on weekends in general, uh, of not being somebody who enjoys and has fun. And in many ways, that's true. In many ways, I am uh, devoid or void of partaking in enjoyment more than I probably should. In other words, I, I don't enjoy things probably as much as I should. But let me use this, this time to argue why I'm like that and argue how I think in terms of, of enjoyment and, and having fun and all those things. Uh, and I wanna do it in three parts, uh, uh, three, uh, three cases, if you will, why Coach Bobby doesn't appear to be the most fun. Number one is I believe at my, at my core that we have to live our lives with a healthy balance of chasing greatness. And, and by that, I mean trying to figure out what your purpose is in this world and doing the one or two or three things that only you can do, doing the one or two or three things that you were born to do. And if you are not pursuing that, then you are not chasing greatness in terms of what you're meant to do on this earth. So I believe that we should have balance between doing that and then rejoicing and enjoying not only the fruits of that labor, so that our brain can continue to see the relevance behind doing things that, that give us pleasure and, 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 and chasing your purpose should give you pleasure at some levels, but also in terms of just understanding what a blessing it is to be walking this earth and to be around people who love us and be able to enjoy things like the Super Bowl um, with family and friends. So there's a, there's a sense, there, there's a piece, a part of me that knows that we have to balance chasing greatness with enjoyment, with pleasure, right? Purpose and pleasure, right? Joy and hunt, all those things, right? We must balance them. Now, I will admit that I leaned, I leaned for most of my life, I have leaned way too far on one side. I was telling a kid today in my class that I teach um, that uh, I can't remember one high school game where I felt joy and contentment, where I was pleased with how I played. And yet I was good enough to play football in college. Right, so understand that that I I I never allow myself to enjoy, um, or or give myself credit for a game that I played in high school, even though I was good enough to play it in college. Right, so I have always leaned way too far on the side of of chasing greatness, chasing greatness, getting better, BTY, all these things, 
and and have 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 admittedly not enjoyed uh, the fruits of what I've done enough, right? But I do believe number one that there should be a balance between chasing greatness and enjoyment. I believe most people lean too far the other way. I admit it to you, I lean too far on the side of work and drive and push, but many of us, most of us, I would argue, lean way too far on the enjoyment to the point where we enjoy, we have we have this, this mindset that every Friday or Saturday, we have to celebrate something that we've done, that we've done during the week. And if we're being honest, all we've done is help somebody else achieve their dream, right? At a job that we're doing, that's making somebody else's dream a reality, we are celebrating via happy hour, celebrating via sleeping in, celebrating via eating, overindulging in food and, and, and beverage, and celebrating something that we didn't work for, right? And I go over that in a separate video, uh, and it's in my book about putting our pleasure behind tasks, putting our pleasure behind things that bring us closer to our dream to our dream, right? And most of us don't do that. So number one, all of us, including me, need to have a healthy balance between chasing greatness, between living BTY, and between that and enjoying ourselves. All right, that's number one. Number two, we made all of this up, right? The things you, you not you, but the things people say I should enjoy, you should have fun, Bobby. You should. Do. We made those things up, and by we, I mean humankind. Mankind made every holiday we celebrate up. Right? People got mad at me in, in my fitness class a while ago because because I I I was lamenting how every weekend there seems to be some excuse for us to overindulge, and the and the holiday at the time, the holiday du jour, was. I think Veterans Day. And I said, you guys go out, you know, celebrate this BS holiday. I didn't mean BS as in Veterans Day is BS. My dad is an army vet. What I meant is, is you celebrating Veterans Day does not have to entail you going out and overeating and over drinking because you are celebrating the, 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 the war heroes that have made your country the great country it is. Right? That, like, like that, like the connection between that and me getting drunk or overeating is a valid connection. No, we made it up. We made up Valentine's Day. We made up happy hour. We made up 40 hour work weeks. We made up lunch with your buddies from work. We made all this stuff up, right? Vacations, we made it up. Your great, great grandfather didn't have vacation. My great, great grandmother didn't celebrate Valentine's Day by going to dinner and spending $200 on flowers, right? So I get it, right? We've earned the right as a society, right? Through, through technology and our brilliance and our brain power to create greatness around us that allows us to celebrate things, that allows us to spend a billion plus dollars on a football game that I love, but we made it up. So for anybody to say that I should... I should enjoy life, that I should enjoy living. Yes, I agree. But the, but, but the definition that people are giving me is made up. So it's telling me that, that, that the people who didn't have Super Bowls and didn't have happy hour and didn't have vacations and didn't have, you know, uh, brunch on Saturday morning and didn't have hiking, like, like they didn't have any pleasure? Before we invented what pleasure looks like, there was no pleasure? So I'm trying to understand and go back to what, what innately brings the human being joy, what innately brings animals of all kinds joy. And part of that is understanding that I can partake in the things I want to partake in, but I will always understand that we made it up. We made it up. Right, so don't get mad at me when I don't get up in the morning and, and go have breakfast with you. We made breakfast up. And don't get mad at me when I don't wanna show up early to the Super Bowl party and bring liquor uh, and overeat nachos because we made it up. We made it up, 
right? So number one is we got to have balance, even me. Number two is understand that all these things that we think we have to do, that we have to do to enjoy life, we made it up. And the third one is, and I always tell my wife this, Maria, love you, and my kids this, right? How much fun do you think John F. K. had? How much fun do you think Martin Luther King had? Mother Teresa, Gandhi, Bruce Lee, right? The great one, Steve Jobs, Michael Jordan, right? Their fun, their enjoyment lies with fulfillment of their purpose. It lies with understanding that I'm here to do something great in this life. And fulfillment of my, of my design, of God's design for my life, fulfillment of that gives me joy. Fulfillment of that gives me joy. So, so in terms of, of fun, right, leadership, greatness, paving the way for others, setting a, an example for those to follow, oftentimes doesn't look like fun, right? It doesn't look, greatness does not look like fun. And so I'll take the criticism. But I want you to understand, guys, that, that my defense of why I live my life the way I live it is we got to have balance. We got to enjoy ourselves after we've chased the greatness that lies within ourselves. We got to balance it. We got to understand, number two, that this, this whole world that, that we are being led to believe we must partake in is made up. So figure out what your greatness looks like. And if that if that means that some of these things are part of it, that's fine. But don't assume that all these things around us, breakfast and lunch and brunch and parties and celebrations and holidays and vacations, we don't have to partake in all of it. It's all made up. And the last one is, do you desire to be the best version of you? Do you desire to really fulfill God's purpose? Many of you say you do. Many of you put on these all these quotes and all these Bible scriptures on your on your stories, but you don't live a life with the with, with, in a way that shows me that you believe you're special, that you believe you're put on earth for a reason. Because if you do, you would understand that greatness doesn't always look like fun. Pursuit of purpose doesn't always look like fun. There is a burden of greatness. There is a burden of purpose that does not look like fun, but it is fun. Pursuing your purpose is fun. The burden of purpose can be fun. Living life on your terms, living life according to your design can be fun, even when it doesn't look like it. All right, guys, so that's my argument. That's my defense against me not always being super fun, but I love it. I love chasing greatness, and I love helping you guys chase the greatness that lies within you. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.